Alright guys, how's it going? Before I start this episode of Star Citizen, I just want to go over something that might help some of you who are having a bit of trouble <laughs> getting the game to run. As you probably know, the game is still in alpha, and it's a little bit scratchy when it comes to, you know, stability and stuff like that. Especially if you're monkeying around with controls and stuff, I've noticed that. <laughs> I thought I had to reinstall it one time simply because I could not get it to run. There's a simple fix for most of this stuff. If you go into your computer, I'm gonna kick OBS over to my right monitor. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of Audacity and that. Right, open your C drive or whatever drive you've got it installed on, yeah? Program Files Directory, I'm guessing. Cloud Imperium Games and Star Citizen. Now, I've also got the test server on. I'm guessing that's just like a, a basic copy. Let's have a mouse over that. Yeah, 30 gigabyte on that one as well. Yeah, they're both the same. So this is like the actual game build and this is the test server build. So you're going to go into the public one probably. You've got this folder, user. If you find that you're getting black screens, blank screens on loading up and it just won't do anything. Why the hell is my mouse flickering? <laughs> Best thing to do? This folder, just whip it over to your desktop, yeah? And that'll basically reset all your settings. It's a pain in the arse, but right now that's what's working for me, yeah? Inside it, you've got your controls, your profiles. It's useful to save it as well, because right now you're probably going to be changing a lot of stuff, trying to get used to, you know, whatever control scheme you're going to be using. This flickering mouse is doing my head in. So I just wanted to get that out the way right now before I start this one because I'm going to be going over a few controls and stuff <laughs> and I've just like failed to have the game load for me a couple of times and this is almost certainly why. So time to get on with the video. Alright, so we're back in the hangar. Now, I remember saying at the end of last episode that I was going to go and I was going to go outside for a walk around, however I think it's important to <laughs> remember that Star Citizen is actually supposed to be some kind of flight uh, simulator type of game, yeah? So it's time for me to actually get into the bloody ship and fly around a bit. Now, this is especially a good idea as you can see down at the bottom here. I got a comment, I think, in one of the videos, a comment from Domestos, was it? If not, I'm sorry, I can't remember who. But for a week, we have access to a new ship, the Avenger. Let's have a quick look at it. Not entirely convinced by the looks in all honesty, it's kind of... Yeah, it's a kind of funny looking shape. What, I mean, what's this all about? Let's have a quick jump inside then if I can. How do you get into it? Right, for some reason I can't seem to interact with it. But I had a little look last night anyway. A little fly in it, just to get used to it. Right, I can't do anything with it. Anyway, let's go on with it. If you press escape, you've got the option of electronic access. Right now, the only thing you can choose is Arena Commander, Star Marine, still not ready. So, let's choose Arena Commander. Now, many of you who have actually got Star Citizen will have seen this part, yeah? You may be even gone for just a free flight in the drone sim or something. You've got three options. You've got the Spectrum Match, which lets you fly a custom mission with your friends over thousands of potential friends and foes connected via the ACA.com relay. I've never done this one yet. I don't even know if it's working or not. There's also the drone sim, which is hone your skills versus cutting edge drone programs. And this is new, this basic flight training, or it's new for me. Uh, they didn't have this the first time I tried flying around in Star Citizen, but that was quite a few months ago. It's basically a flight tutorial, yeah, which I'm going to do probably in the next episode, but not right now. If you actually click on the drone sim though, you've got a free flight, explore without the need to kill, yeah? So this just lets you fly around, and there are two different... You've got the Broken Moon and you've got Dying Star. So you can fly around in either. And you can also fight against a Vandal Swarm. You can race around some planets. Pretty smart, that. 
but right now I'm just going to go with the free flight so I can get used to the controls and basically see how the ship flies. So let's click on launch. Now there's absolutely no pressure on you in this whatsoever, you just fly around freely, yeah? So this is the one to start with when you're just getting started. Right, one of the first things you might notice about it is very sensitive mouse movement. You also notice that the graphics are great. Frame rate's down about 35, 40 though, that's not awesome. Let's have a look at the the settings. Right, my graphics are on high, so I'm going to put my graphics down to medium, I think. Now let's stick the gamma up a touch. Now this is all changed again because <laughs> when you move your user folder over, it, it clears everything, yeah? Now let's go with subtitles and subtitles. I'm going to put the volume, music volume down so it doesn't annoy you. Right, uh, I want to switch to the HOTAS. Actually, I'm just going to fly around right now with the HOTAS. The, the thing here is, yeah, I'm using the mouse right now to move there. You can actually have your mouse and keyboard at the same time, move, move with either. But that's a little bit advanced right now for me, so I'm just going to try with the HOTAS X. Now, I'm going to look at this from the point of view of, say, Elite. I've never noticed these before. Uh, right, anyway. The throttle seems to work from the from the get-go, yeah? That's me going forward, as you can see. One of the biggest differences is the yaw. The yaw actually seems to work. It's, it's completely different, in fact, from, from a game like Elite, where the yaw is just prohibitive, yeah? So, and if you want to move left or right in Elite, you would have to basically roll and then pitch. Yeah, it's the only way to really move left and right. And Star Citizen, though, you've actually got proper. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if proper is the right word, but yeah, you can see how the yaw works perfectly well, left and right. There's no need for you to roll and then pitch. I'm not sure if any of these actually number crunch this to see what the difference is. Uh, right now, while I am learning to fly in Star Citizen, I'm going to switch my yaw and roll again because this feels uncomfortable for me. Well, using the HOTAS X, you've got the, the yaw twist, yeah? So I twist the stick in order to yaw in Elite. However, doing that right now is making me roll instead. Nudging the stick to the right makes me yaw. Whereas in Elite, that would be my role. So I'm going to switch those around. I don't know if I'm going to stick with this setup, yeah? But right now, while I'm getting comfortable with it, I'm going to have to do that. So into key bindings, and we're going to go to joystick HOTAS, and then advanced controls. Now, <laughs> this is a few videos all on its own, obviously. Right now, though, I just want to... I just want to concentrate on flight, so we'll ignore this cockpit thing, go straight to flight view. Now, this is just your look around, like head look. I don't know if head looks in the game right now either, but for stuff like this, you're gonna want a, you're gonna want some kind of head look, some kind of head tracking to do this properly. I think. Right, one of the biggest issues right now is the game is if I rebind my hat switch here, like left on the hat switch, <laughs> it won't unbind it from this. So if you're gonna use an ability, make sure you also unbind it. Again, the game is still alpha, yeah, you've got to kind of forgive it for this. So let's just unbind all these hat things, because I'm going to use my hat switch for my thrusters. Uh, cycle camera view, button 6, we can keep that there right now, I think. Actually, no, I'm going to change that to button 12. Yeah, so, I mean, if you want to unbind stuff before you bind it, then that might be, that might help with some issues. Right, here we go, flight movement pitch on the y-axis, that's fine. Yaw on the x-axis, we want to change this to double click to change and then twist the stick for the z-rotation. Roll is going to be the x. Now, we've got throttle on the throttle axis, that seemed to work fine. Space brake I'm not going to use, actually maybe I will. No, I'm not going to use that right now. 
match target velocity. Don't need that right now. Right, so strafe. Right control on that. That's terrible. You're never going to use a keyboard. I guess you might use a keyboard if you don't have a throttle. <laughs> but I'm going to unbind all this. Right, strafe left is going to be left on the hat switch. Strafe right is going to be right. Up is up. Down is down. Strafe forward and backward, I'm going to use the rocker on the back of the throttle. Right, so this is just saying the slider, yeah. So the best way to do it is actually just do it here. Strafe forward, back. Just put it there. <laughs> As you can see, you do still have to unbind this, yeah. If I had now to use my, my rocker, the slider on the back, it would only move forward. Right, so forward and back on the slider. Boost. Uh, I'm going to use my boost that I use in Elite. If I can remember what button, six, nine, it's <laughs> pretty bad, yeah. All this stuff, targeting and stuff, not going to bother with that right now. Right, now that five minutes or so I've spent is going to make a massive difference. This is what I didn't do the first time I tried flying around in Star Citizen and I hated it. I was like, this is crap. But if you don't actually get your controls nailed at the start, then yeah, it's going to be crap. It's so much easier just to twist to the yaw. You can see it is incredibly, really nimble, yeah? And a lot of people not liking it. But you'd be surprised at how quickly you get used to it. That's my boost gone. You can see how easy it is to actually maneuver around stuff. I'm a little bit out of practice, but I'll get it nailed soon. Yeah, I mean, you can fly around. Big asteroids. Just a little bit flighty on the yaw, so I'm going to see if I can change that. Right, controls, options. Again, if you go to the joystick, hold task 1. You can change your sensitivities and stuff, you know. So I thought the sensitivity was too much on the yaw. I've never used this edit curve yet, but let's have a look at it. That's interesting. Now, if you watch my joystick curves video, this looks like it's almost the same type of thing, yeah? I don't want to do this right now. I'm going to have to have a proper look at how to do this. So let's just cancel that. Should be able to just change the sensitivity of it so that it's not quite so flighty, yeah? So let's put it up to 2, see what that does. Right, that's me using the mouse again. Does that feel a little bit better? Hmm, maybe, yeah. The thing about this is you're not quite sure what works right now and what doesn't. Pulling too many G's, yeah, that's what's causing the kind of greying out and stuff. It's really smart though. Warning. You are approaching simulation boundary. Don't wanna do that. You see how quickly you also pitch and basically move in the opposite direction so quickly. It's gonna take a lot of getting used to. For, for elite guys, yeah. My initial suspicion is that better players, the better you are, the more dominant you're going to be playing this because reactions are really going to count. It's really superb sense of flight you get. That was lucky. Now, you notice it's saying stuff like proximity deck there. That's because it knows, you know, the regions of your ship. <laughs> Pretty severe red out there. Right, I think I was getting too low down, yeah. Basically getting too low to the planet. So let's head up a bit. 
Now, if I line up with this rock here, let's have a look at the thrusters, yeah? So, thrusting right. You see, you do drop speed, but it is working, yeah? And same with left. It just maybe feels a little bit strange because the yaw is so... <laughs> so good. And because you're so nimble, rather than thrust around an object, yeah, you can actually yaw around it. But yawing and thrusting. Yeah, that's how you kind of nudge your way around stuff. I was actually flying much better last night, but... Yeah, proximity port. So yeah, like I was saying about the areas on your ship, yeah? You've got like damage areas too, so if I had to hit this rock on the right hand side, it's going to hurt the right side of my ship. The shields seem to stand up to that pretty well though. And that was me just kind of nudging past those those objects with my thrusters. Going to do that again. This looks absolutely gorgeous. You get a really nice impression of height as well. Don't know what's causing the turbulence. <laughs> See, the shields are holding up. Yeah, I've gone into a spin, but it's really, really smart. Yeah, really smart. But if you're finding it difficult to fly around, then just go back to your your elite control scheme. Maybe if you if you've never really been playing elite, then it's just a case of finding what's what works for you. Yeah, I mean all I'm doing there is thrusting around this while yawing. Yeah, and you can sort of spin right around an object like that. And the Hotas X is not the most accurate stick ever, yeah? But you can do it. Now you've got weapons as well, yeah? For some bizarre reason, it's got the cannon at one. And the lasers at two. Don't really get that. I think you'd want the laser at one most time. gonna show you this. <laughs> and the effects are pretty cool. I don't know how this is gonna work in something like virtual reality. Yeah, that's way too much shaking. <laughs> I don't even know if it's gonna have virtual reality support or not now. But I could only imagine how cool this is gonna look in VR. Gonna need an incredibly meaty system to do that though. Right, so this is pretty much all there is to this broken moon. You're just flying around asteroids. Trying to, basically just trying to get your controls right, yeah? See if I can get a little bit of fancy flying before I finish this video. Again, the yaw is very sensitive. It's all sensitive, yeah? All movements are really sensitive. Constant greying out is a little bit annoying in all honesty, yeah. But that's how they deal with it. Yeah, I mentioned this I think in my first video. The way to prevent overly maneuverable ships from being dominant is you get those grey outs and stuff, yeah, the blackouts and red outs when you pull too many G's. Like that. There I go. <laughs> And that's me passed out in my ship. <laughs> it's just so damn cool. Uh. Now, I'm going to finish this one up by having a look at something that I wasn't aware of until last night either when I first started 
having a look. This is all well and good flying around in a kind of simulator, yeah? There's nothing here. You've got a planet below you, but it's just, you know, it's just background. You can't land on it and stuff. But what about, you know, if this was a, a real system and you want to fly around inside the system, yeah, go to another planet, stuff like that. This is the stuff that, that we're interested in, yeah, in terms of, you know, in terms of, like, immersion and feeling that you're actually in a living, breathing universe. Because this does feel an awful lot like a theme park, just, you know, this broken moon here. It's like you're flying around in a theme park. Although it's very smart, I certainly don't feel like I'm part of anything, you know, bigger. Uh, but I had a look on YouTube to see if there was anything, anything new on that. So I'll just leave you with this. on the same map, in the same scale that you could fly normally.